Okay, we're rolling. All right, this is an interview at the Avila Senior Residence, Albany, New York. It is the 27th of March, 2003, 2006, got me going, <laughs> 2006. Uh, it is nine, approximately 9.30 a.m. Interviewers are Wayne Clark and Mike Russert. Could you give me your full name, date of birth, and place of birth, please? Francis M. Tate. That's Francis with an E. <laughs> Tate is T-A-I-T. -T. Okay. When were you born, please? May 26, 1924. And where? New York City. And what was your educational background prior to entering the service? I was a high school graduate. Do you remember um, where you were and uh, your reaction when you heard about Pearl Harbor? It was a Sunday morning, and I was home. Mm -hmm. So, did you? How did you hear this? Was it on the on radio? radio. Mm -hmm. What was your reaction when you heard about this? Shock, mm -hmm. <laughs> really, mm -hmm. because we had no—at least I didn't have any indication we were going to go to war. Mm -hmm. Did you have any idea where Pearl Harbor was? No, never heard of it. <laughs> well, yep, most people hadn't at the time. All right, um, now you joined the U.S. Army. Uh, why did you decide to enlist? I just felt that that was the thing to do. Mm -hmm. It was a way to, for me to do something to help out. Why did you pick the Army? Well, it was more, it was advertised more really than the other services mm -hmm. were as far as women went. Okay. Um, so you, you joined in August of, of 1944? Yes. Where did you go for your training? Fort Oglethorpe, Georgia. Now, was this the first time you were really away from home? Yes. How did you f feel when you got there? Well, I was, I was so busy I didn't have time to be homesick. <laughs> what kind of training did you get? Was it a regular basic type training or yeah. a specialty training? No, this was just regular basic training. How long were you there? Uh, let's see, Approximately. Six weeks. Okay. Um, where did you go from there? Camp Upton, New York. Okay. Did you receive any specialized training or? No, no. What did you do at Camp, Up Camp Upton? Uh, well, they called me a, a, a company clerk. Mm -hmm. In other words, you were really just a clerk in mm -hmm. a whack orderly room. We did morning reports and all that. So, so you had a, a background in uh, typing and yeah. shorthand and stenography? I was a legal secretary when I joined the Army. Okay. Uh, could you tell us some of the duties that you performed? Uh, <laughs> as a company clerk? Uh, ty well, typing, filing. Mm -hmm. Reports, morning reports? Yeah, morning, oh yes, morning reports. Now, did you live in barracks at yes. the time? Yeah. What were they like? <laughs> right. You know, how, how did you feel living in those? <laughs> well, they were comfortable. Mm -hmm. Nothing fancy, obviously. Mm -hmm. Double deck bunks. And uh, did you have to uh, stoke the the stove for heat? The old coal stove. Not and... normally. Once in a while, we got stuck doing it, mm -hmm. but normally. They had the men that did it. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Did you get to go home often since you were from the area? No. Well, I really wasn't there too long. I don't think I was there six months, and then I came out on orders to go overseas. Oh, okay. Uh, where did you uh, go? Europe, right. France. Now, how did you get there? By boat, mm -hmm. ship. Did you go in a, a convoy or? Yes, was it was a troop ship. What was it like on the ship? Were you you must have been in a like a separate place from the men on yeah. the ship? Yeah, it was <laughs> it was nothing to write home about. I mean, we had a bed, mm -hmm. but uh, and it was cold, mm -hmm. and I was seasick the whole trip. <laughs> How was the food aboard ship? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> She'll tell you. I, I've eaten better. Uh -huh. <laughs> and when we 
British cooks. So you British cook cooks. everything. You get raw bacon. Uh -huh. Fish heads. That's true. That's true. But we no wonder you were seasick. Where did you, where did the ship land? Um, reached? Land. The hub. No. We landed in Scotland. Where, I can't remember where though. Mm -hmm. That's okay. How long were you in uh, the British Isles? Uh, well, let's see, I went from there to France. I spent most of my tour in France. Okay. I think you should mention that after landing in Scotland that the, the war was over. Pardon? The war. Oh. Well, it ended the day we landed. Oh, really? <laughs> so what was it like? You went into all these celebrations. Uh, yeah, what yeah. was that like? Lots of happy times. <laughs> Especially the soldiers. They were happy they were going to get to go home. Mm -hmm. They were leaving and you were just coming, yeah, right? Just arriving. <laughs> well, what did you do in France when you uh, reached France? Clerical work, mainly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Were you processing soldiers to, to go back home? Or? No, I worked in a WAC unit, so... Uh, was it a large unit? It was pretty large, about 200 women then. Mm -hmm. Did it have a, a, a designation, numerical designation or anything that you can recall? Oh, dear. No, that's okay if you... So, um... All of you basically you have were to get your records out to yeah. answer that. All of you basically were there to do clerical duties then. Uh, Whatever they told us to do mm -hmm. we did. Mm -hmm. So did you get to travel around France much or did you get much leave time? I had leave. I went to Switzerland and I went to uh, Holland. I think we even visited Germany. That's before I was assigned there. Did you have to pull uh, duties like KP or guard duty or anything like that? Pull KP, uh -huh. not guard duty. But not when you were overseas? No, we didn't because they, they used the... Uh, Local the, nationals. But, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you pulled it at basic, right? All basic training. You pulled everything basic training. Yes. How long were you in Europe? Two and a half years. Now, what were some of your other assignments while you were there? If you were there that long. Well, they were all administrative type mm -hmm. jobs. Mm -hmm. But I worked in the ordinance. And, uh, gee, I can't even remember. Did you notice a lot of rebuilding of the country going on? Not too much then. Mm -hmm. By the time I left, they were doing a lot of it. Because it was really pretty torn up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, you said you were in Germany? Yes. What, were, what was it like, the destruction and so on? It, well, late, it was in bad shape. It, it was pretty bad. But, you know, the Germans are very ambitious. Mm -hmm. And they... The, they worked hard at rebuilding. What was your equipment like? Was it uh, modern, up to date for the time? Yes, I think so. Mm -hmm. Did you uh, notice any type of shortages in equipment or clothing or rations or anything? Well, off and on, they'd run short, but, you know, eventually they, it was a shipment from, from the United States. It, over there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, who, what were your officers like? Pitiful. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Most of them were very good. Mm -hmm. They really were. I learned a lot from some of them. Okay. Um, were there any incidents or experiences that kind of stand out over others, maybe something that was kind of humorous or something that was inspiring or sad or... Yeah, you can tell them about basic training where they issued you men's clothing because they didn't have any clothing for women. That's true. Did you ever see somebody my size in a male overcoat? <laughs> I, you know, I heard that. Yep. The, the women were issued men's clothing. That's yeah. right, because they didn't have any. 
And uh, then you might mention, you know, she was uh, one of the first women to be promoted as sergeant major. Oh, really? Yes. And uh, she was, prior to that, selected by the director of the Women's Army Corps to come up and uh, be the sergeant major for the Women's Army Corps in her office. And so, the Pentagon. And the Pentagon. So oh, she so served, went back to the Pentagon. Right. She served three years in the Pentagon. How many years total service did you have? Twenty-two and a half. Oh, so you, so you retired from yes, the service? Yes, I did. Oh, okay. I had a break, but then I went back in. What year did you retire? 19, December of 1968. Oh, so you saw a lot of changes then. Oh, yes. What were some of the changes you saw in the military? <laughs> oh, boy. The deterioration of discipline as a result of the country as a whole failing to maintain discipline in schools and every other place. So you, you saw the changes from the old brown boot army yes. to... to the black shoe army. Yeah. And it was quite a change. Mm -hmm. Now, were you, did you spend most of your time then, after coming back from Europe, in, in the Pentagon? No. Uh, when I first came back from Europe, I was assigned to, a, a, well, several organizations in the, in the States. And then I was a first sergeant in a WAC unit for seven years. Right. Yeah. Well, you were also in Atlanta. You were with the WAC detachment in Atlanta, yeah. Georgia. And you were, all, you were not useless, were you, Fort Eustis? No, not Fort Eustis. But you were assigned to Fort Hamilton and served there as first sergeant, which is when I first met her, uh, for seven years. Because of her mother, who was in the hospital, who had a major stroke, mm -hmm. and she had to be assigned to the area where her mother was so ill. Now, as a uh, first sergeant and sergeant major, you probably uh, experienced a lot of problems with, you know, the typical you know, Article 15s and, and <laughs> things like that, disciplinary problems. Yeah, we didn't have too many with the women, though. No. no. Mm -hmm. We had some, but not mm -hmm. not like the men did. Mm -hmm. Most of our women behaved well. Mm -hmm. Well, and the thing is, they were all volunteers. Mm -hmm. And you must uh -huh. remember the draft, oh, yeah. uh, where they scuffed up everybody and so yeah. forth and what have you. And so that's why, in point of fact, that the men had more disciplinary problems because of the uh, people that were drafted. Well, they didn't want to be there in the first place. That's right. Mm -hmm. What do you think were some of the major changes that you saw in your entire career? Oh, boy. Well, you can start off with the uniform changes. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then you can start off with uh, when General Abrams integrated the women into the regular, regular army, army. Yeah. and uh, they lived in the barracks with the men. Do you think that was a good thing or a bad thing? Well, at the time I had mixed emotions about it, but uh, it, wor it worked out well. Mm -hmm. It really did. How were the women received by the men into the, you know, the regular the army? army? Uh, the male army. <laughs> <laughs> the male army. <laughs> well, originally, I don't think they were too fond of us, mm -hmm. but uh, they they, they, grew, they grew to love us. Yeah. Well, you know, we we did our jobs and they did theirs, and mm -hmm. so. And basically, you paved the way for the women of today yes. that are in the combat arms. They're flying helicopters. They're basically doing everything. Everything. That, the men are doing. Except beyond the line of battle, they're not fighting forces, you know. Even the helicopter uh, pilots of today, while they do get into it, uh, they don't, they're not combat, right. that's what I'm trying to say. But it 
It was a good life. It really was. And beside which they paid me every month. <laughs> Plus, you, you've got all the benefits. That's uh, right. Health benefits. Uh, you get a pension for life. Mm -hmm. How do you think your time in the service had an effect on your life? Well, I think I grew up in the Army. I really did. Drastic effect. <laughs> Drastic, yes. In the I, sense of to Long Island, you know, it was nothing at the time. Mm -hmm. That's where she lived, mm -hmm. although she was born in New York City. And it was a farm community for all intents and purposes. Well, you take a young lady out of the hinterlands and put them in, in this wide experience so you can't help but you know, Where did you live on Long Island? Sayville. Oh, okay. And uh, so then you put them in the army. It still happens today. Mm -hmm. Take the kids off the farms and small mm -hmm. cities and villages. And it's a, a, a traumatic change. Yeah. All for the better, may I add. Mm -hmm. Same with the young men. They grow up in the army. They're disciplined. Uh, everybody would give their right hand be able to hire retired military or people who served in the service mm -hmm. because they're disciplined. And so, although I'm speaking for Francis, uh, we've discussed it for years, so I'm not encroaching upon mm -hmm. uh, what she's saying, but it was a, a dramatic experience, and she wouldn't be the woman she is today if she had not had it. Mm -hmm. She would not have been successful. Mm -hmm. Say, in the civilian community, women weren't working in the, as you recall, now, well, you probably don't, but I recall, women weren't working. There were clerks and typists and stenos and, and that, but you didn't see them promoted into positions of authority. Mm -hmm. And so, Francis succeeded all through her military career and subsequently served uh, the United States government as a civil service in the Pentagon for, oh, I don't know, what, 10 years after he had retired from the military? Yes, 12 years. 12 years, I'm sorry, yeah. So, uh, again, uh, you have to ask yourself, where would you be today if you had not, with a high school education, joined the military, been exposed to responsibility and discipline? Mm -hmm. That's the nearest I could uh, express friends uh, thinking. Am I wrong, Francis? No, no. Did you ever make use of the GI Bill at all? No, I didn't. Mm -hmm. Were you ever? Did you ever join any veterans organizations? No. Yes, you did. And and COA, oh, the non commissioned officers yeah, association. Okay. Um, Forgot about it. How about did you ever stay in contact with anyone that served with you? Uh, you know, truthfully, I think most of the ones I served with are not here any longer. Mm -hmm. The answer to that question, however, Francis, is she went to the WAC reunions at Fort, reunions at Fort McClellan, Alabama, every year, which is then the home of the Women's Army Corps, mm -hmm. every year. And there she associated with her people that served under her, enlisted people. She also uh, met the people who she worked for, the colonels, uh, the highest ranking uh, women in the military who were all friends of hers because mm -hmm. she worked in the Pentagon. Mm -hmm. And uh, so in this regard, she attended every reunion and became uh, uh, reassociated with all her friends that she had. Paul War stories. Right. <laughs> and the fact that she brings out is the fact uh, for all people from World War II and for that matter Korea, dying in such large numbers that most of our friends, mine too, I was a late Johnny come late, uh, but most of her friends are dead. Mm -hmm. Both officer and enlist. Mm -hmm. Either that or they're in this uh, old soldier's homes in, in, in Washington or they are otherwise disabled. Mm -hmm. Okay, well thank you very much for your interview. I'm sorry I butted no, in. No, that's okay. That's good. She remembers more about me than I remember about Well, that's only because uh, we've known each other, let's see, since 19... 1962. Yeah, 1962. <laughs>